back in the United States, we are live. Number one, we've got a new rule on the House docket. Financial innovation, yep, this is it, pass the House. Okay, so we passed the House, did not pass the Senate. Okay, so here's this bill I wanted to put on your radar. I just wanted to bring this back full circle. We've been looking at Bitcoin, we've been looking at Ethereum for a long time now. People have considered them an investment. People have been using them in business. Outside of the US, they've been using them more. In South America, they are used very much. as a store of value, as a mode of payment. And now in the United States, I think uh, in the beginning, it was used for drugs, it was used for dark net, it was used for all that type of stuff. Also there was online casinos, and then it court sort of went into like semi-legitimate. You had NFTs, which were like artwork. They weren't obviously Ponzi schemes, I guess. And now we've gone full blown, they are in people's retirement accounts. In the, uh, the Grayscale ETF, and they've done so much competition in the past year that uh, Grayscale was having like a 2% plus VIG on your investment with them that uh, everybody else beat this margin down. It's kind of like OpenSea, if you remember crypto. OpenSea was on the scene. Their fees were 2.5% on the exchange of NFTs. And now it's zero or 0 0.5 or whatever. You know, Blur just destroyed them. Those fees are not tenable. What's clear is that the government is making the rules, which we want. So here's some of the rules that we want. I'm just going to make a, a bingo list of rules we want for crypto. We want to see tax rules. What tax should we pay? Done. We got that. That's the IRS rules. Uh, we got that with Mika. We want tax rules. What should brokers, what should agents, brokers report? Yeah, so just uh, here's your bingo card, right? So we've got the bingo card. What do you want the people to report? We've got that. US has got that. Uh, USA has got the IRS virtual assets rules. Mika is good on this too. We want rules on what is a security. No idea, no idea at all. In the US, that's not a check, that is an X. In the US, we have Howie test. Nobody will answer the phone, right? So if you are launching a product in the US and you're like, I wonder if this is a security. You're going through this process and you're like, okay, we got an opinion letter from a lawyer, what now? And someone's like, maybe you should tell the SEC, just in case. Problem is, SEC doesn't really call you back that quickly. So you've got to know people or be lucky. That's where that is. So that's not good. In uh, Switzerland, we have FINMA. FINMA is very clear about the rules. So that's good. They tell you what is a, what is a, we have you know, application token, the, the usage token, the utility token, the investment token. Um, that is pretty clear. That's good. You need to have clear rules because people are creative and whatever the rules are, people are going to go right up against them. You, whatever rules you make, they're going to troll you to make something else. So good luck with that. And then another question for regulation that we want is, how can I invest? In the United States, if you want to invest in a risky project, then you just need to be rich. You need to have enough cash or enough income where you literally are not allowed to invest in these projects, which is pretty dumb. A lot of people have called instead for an intelligence test, a driving test. If you can take a driving test to drive and driving can kill anybody, then you can take an intelligence investing test to understand what your risks are before spending your own money. And then the last question is, how to classify any of this stuff? In the US, we have no clear idea. We have the SEC, the FTC, the CFTC, totally unrelated, all fighting turf. And here's, here's the really nasty thing, right? So you go make a token, okay? You got a token. And then you're going to maybe intentionally, maybe inadvertently, get influencers to spread the word about your token. Okay, well, if your token is an investment, there's a whole set of rules that apply to that. If your token is a product, there's a whole set of rules that apply to that. And if your token is a currency, there's totally different rules for influencers, for marketing, for all these things. So it's very hard to even know which agency is anywhere related to this stuff. So that's the bingo card. Can we please get some rules worldwide, even if they're different in every country? Just tell us what the hell rules apply and where they apply.
yeah, the communities all around crypto seem to be just uh, absolutely falling apart. It's uh, well, at least in this Web three world. Anyway, so crypto good, Web three bad, and it's your fault. I mean, you yeah. are the creator of Web three with your with your lead author status. Good job. You're welcome. You're welcome. Just uh, send me an invoice for all your losses, and uh, I'll just uh, boost you back up. Yeah, then I'll just ignore it, and uh, I'll, I'll send you a pizza. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if you're if you're not here making friendship, you are missing out on alpha. People are like, where's the alpha? This is the this is the right here. You understand? Like us having a good time. Yeah, you don't need many people in a room. In fact, the less people in the room, the better. That's right. And you get to a certain number, the 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 hive mind starts to starts to take over. Man, I I just came oh so I just came back from China. Welcome back, Will. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I figured. I mean, uh, I was just waiting for you to get done talking about how cool you are. You know, oh look at me. I know Mika, and uh, you know, uh, I recycle. And my name is Will. I was getting ready for you. I was waiting for you to get ready uh, to get done with all that, and then I was going to hit you with the welcome back to uh, or it's always sunny. Yeah, man. It's always sunny in Philly. You know, it's a little culture shock. You don't get things delivered in five minutes in the U.S. You have to wait for Ubers. Five minutes in Uberland means like 50 minutes, not like oh, one minute. So what, in China, it's like in three seconds? It's now. Everything's now. Why do, we, why do you live here? I know. My wife, she was going to the club. She came back and she realized she ran out of fake eyelashes. These cost about 50 cents. It was 2 a.m. We got back from the club. On her phone, she orders eyelashes to show up the next day. And then it's like, they will arrive in 20 minutes. It's like, great. She's trying to go to sleep and then she's got to wait 20 minutes for her eyelashes to show up, which again cost 50 cents. You need to hook me up with a passport, buddy. I need to, uh, I need to experience this sort of life. You need, a, you need a visa. Well, I know you got a passport. I've seen you on the foreign lands. But I, allegedly. I don't know, yeah, allegedly. But I have not seen your cheese. Your cheese I have not seen your China visa, huh. also known as a cheese <laughs> Cheese yeah, man, I can I listen. I've watched a lot of TikTok, and I see these uh, reviews of like Japanese McDonald's, and I gotta tell you, I'm sold. It's uh, like a destination. Yeah, KFC is like a like a fancy thing, and that Pizza Hut is fancy as well. Bad, bad food, but fancy. And a monopoly man with his money. I feel like Pizza Hut's going down. I feel like Pizza Hut's going to be the new LimeWire. You know, just go out of business and then sell out as an NFT project. Yeah, that would be yeah. so hot. Yeah, you theory. make it a Toys R Us. You call it Pizza Hut, but it's really like a Toys R Us. Yeah, Toys R Us, they went bankrupt, right? So that was the same thing. Yeah, and then they got rebought or whatever, and now they're back. Yeah, they just, boom. Yeah, just like that. I'm leaving. I'm leaving this space. I'm still going to do my crypto trading and whatnot, but like, this is just a, it's a ring around the rosy, you know? Yeah. Time resets. It's a new class of morons. So you you're going to sell the necklace? You're going to sell the chain or what? No, never. <laughs> doing different things with my time it's just a headache you know and it's like you can't save them i might as well open my own slaughterhouse and then you know <laughs> and then walk right into it yeah well i mean <laughs> eventually <laughs> well let me test this thing out just jump right in head first <laughs> yeah it was, it was a very nice wood chipper we have here like you know because i came in primarily you know gary v educating da 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 and you know so i fell into i'm what an idiot what an idiot I should open my own wood chipper and start in this way, you know? Yeah. I'd have packaged, yeah. We'd be eating Wagyu right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't Just do that much there. travel. You and me, we do, uh, you know, Tallinn, that's been a thing. And then New York, that's really my main travel. That's my main events. The only one that mattered was the one that we were at together. Other than that, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, I've been, I've, I've retired, uh, I would say, I actually kind of sort of mentally checked out in like, February 2022. <laughs> I really there we go. never have throwback. Never really come back. Yeah. So even when you met me, I wasn't even me. I was just a shell of what I of uh of half the man that I used to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I kind of lost my mind. There was this point where I just kept making money. Yeah. And then uh, you know I would uh, buy something for like 0.5 ETH and then sell it. Sell all the things that I bought for like. 10 ETH, you know, a week later. And I was just like blowing money out of my brain right now. <laughs> you know how it goes, allegedly. Allegedly. What's up, bud? Yo, what's up, Legend? How you doing? What's up, boys? Chilling. How you doing? Good, uh, I heard you say you're going to crack a beer, so I just went and grabbed one. Let's go. Uh, 6.30 somewhere. Uh, 6.30 in the city. That's right. Let me introduce you to somebody who really doesn't matter at all. 
Uh, this guy's name is William, and uh, he apparently knows how to upload to GitHub or something like that. So, oh, so uh, he he's like dev him. smart. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he's funny, and uh, he can sing La Bamba pretty good. And I'd say it's probably his best trait. You gotta, you gotta have the skills to uh, go around. Amazing. Nice to meet you, William. Hope you're Cheers. Normal. Good to meet. Yeah, he wrote a uh, lead author ERC seven twenty one. He's responsible for all of this madness that we're all going through on a daily basis. And uh, and as you can see, uh, he gets the respect he deserves with this audience. And it's uh, <laughs> and yeah. Matt, this, this is exactly why I came here. There were no like, there's nobody in here, and I'm sick of the show of a bazillion people and people yelling over each other. Yeah, Especially dude, we need forty seven thousand retweets and likes right now. Yeah, we're not gonna. The last yeah. comment wins a million dollars on this post <laughs> right here. Uh, yeah, dude, I should just come to Philly. We should just saunas in Philly that have cold dipping situations. Yeah, we do. We have uh, we got a nice one up in Edison, New Jersey, and it's the Korean one. So it's uh, it's baller. Huh. It's uh, it's good times. Yeah, we need to have some, we need to crack some of those uh, some of those grapefruit mixer things or whatever the we're drinking Korean barbecue or. Yeah, man. We didn't really get to degen too hard last time I seen you either. We'll we'll fix that. <laughs> oh, Yo, man. I miss seeing the conferences, man. You know, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I just I don't I don't care anymore. I mean, I don't blame you. It all turned into a show, but it was fun while it lasted, no? Yeah, no, it was. It's just it's like all the fake ones just keep rising to the top. The people with absolutely nothing to say, zero value. And then, and then you see it, and then you see the people who are actually building and doing things and who have value, and it's just like, like this room right here. It's me and him for like, for like 30 minutes. If you even search at legend, at diverse, you'll see me firing back and forth with them. This is sad. I got the screenshot up with the uh, Aces is Discord. Oh, yeah, of diverse. Yep. All, and all because I was like, hey, stop spending your money on this bullshit. And then, uh, you know. It, you know, everything went to zero, but this thing went to zero. It the, it didn't even get close to the bear. And, you know, I was just trying to, I was just trying to help people. That's my problem. They were like, you know, we're going to give 0.2 ETH to the first person who sweeps the most and all this other. I was just, I was just like, hey, why are you guys, <laughs> uh, can, can you guys not do math? Pay attention. You know, this is called fractions. Don't make me math, bro. It's far too early in the evening for that. We live in the era of financially illiterate people coming to a financially unregulated unre space to learn financial literacy that could not possibly go wrong in any aspect. That's the quote. That is the quote. And we find ourselves here. Look how many people have looked. We've multiplied this room. We doubled up. Let's go. Hi, Cookie. How are you, Cookie? I hope you're doing well, Cookie. Miss you, Cookie. Yeah, miss you, Cookie. Nah, Cookie's chill. She's good vibes. Well, she's got an MF her. I mean, clearly. Uh, I'm not bullish on the whole MF or thing, but it's a cute looking PFE though. They didn't try, which is which is half the battle. True. <laughs> hey, let me let me put the survey up. We're just talking crap on events here. Large in person events around crypto are fishing for noobs, giving out fake alpha, and uh, not making people happy. Anybody got some shout outs to events that they think are better or worse than that prescription? So I actually have a. I have a thesis for this. Um, kind of goes against what you're saying to a degree, but also aligns with it. I think the overall culture behind the events initially was very good um, in the aspect of like crypto was very niche, very like low user base compared to population, right? And it was like a place where you could just like go and connect with the people that you've been with and like hang out. Like it was, it was fun. Like. 2018 it was fun 2019 it was fun 2020 2021 it turned to a show. but it was it started off really fun really healthy and people would actually like have some captivating conversations and then we entered like the 21 region when it blew up with covid and everything and then 22 everybody was stoked to be out of their house i think that's when it started really taking a downhill downhill spiral and it turned into more of a monetization event for businesses that are either running out of money, need money, or desperate for sponsorship. And it tur just turned into like the whole business model. Cause initially it really wasn't like a business model uh, for an emerging technology and something that people are so quote unquote passionate about should not cost thousands of dollars for you to even get into an event that's trying to push it forward to public uh, info, right? I, I I'm completely against that. But the one thing that's really cool right now that I think is we're starting to see like people that actually matter in this world 
but we've come to this point, this, this leaning point where now like normies that are impressive or have that type of pull and swag behind them are now freely and willingly like wanting to get active and become a part of this. And I think that's really cool to watch because it's not circled the people we already know are going to make it because the, they have made it. We're helping push forward like the ethos of like, we're trying to make it, let's get some some new faces involved. And I, I think it's actually really cool, regardless of the political intent behind it, that Trump's like going to speak in BTC Nashville and is openly like, discussing it like a lot of politicians have been regardless of what size side they're on it's it's cool to see real people coming into the space that have some some cojones behind them um and trying to like talk and learn engage like i actually helped with um tulsi gabbard who's pretty deeply connected to trump uh surprisingly enough um like they know nothing about this space but once you start like showing them and introducing them like i had a dinner with her eight nine months ago and the entirety of these past eight, nine months, she's asked questions and get asked for feedback or like given opinions. And now you see like light conversations coming up in that uh, in, in her f forms of content around crypto. And it's cool to see the real people uh, get, get involved. But that's my take. It's like, wow, people are actually trying to learn something and, uh, you know, be awesome. Yeah. And I will say this, like as much as I hate politicians. They do tend to be pretty smart, so they're able to actually grasp the concept and apply the ideology that we have in good fashions and bad fashions, depending on what their agenda is, of course. But they do tend to be pretty intellectual.